welcome everyone for our retreat wex community and our weekly thursday event uh, the people are new to the community welcome to retreat wex and the people who all are there in the community welcome back to our events okay so let me just quickly go through so today we have a third day of presentation for our uxd challenge that we organized in uh, from uh, from august to september entire month month wherein people can work on the ux design challenge and they can add the case study in their portfolios so let's begin and thank you so much chris for uh, for being a mentor for this session and he will be sharing feedback and design critic for today's presentation okay so uh, let me quickly introduce about twitter ux community the people who are new for them okay so we are a community from ux to uxers to uxers Uh, wherein we provide a platform wherein people can come together learn connect and grow with each other wherein we organize weekly events wherein uh, uh, people can connect on different events they can talk with speakers ask their queries and those kind of stuff live event virtual event then we organize design challenges wherein people can like like sharpen their skills like on some practical uh, practical projects like ui design ux design user research something like that wherein everyone can sharpen their hard skills and soft skills as well working individual or working within a team so those areas then we do arrange whiteboard challenges as well monthly whiteboard challenges then we have a portfolio and resume ticketing system on our discord platform so feel free to use that and feel free to get uh reviews from our mentors then we do arrange coffee chats and feedback uh coffee chat on our discord platform as well and we have some different channels on our discord platform so feel free to utilize that we do have this discord link over here and today we have a uh, jwarita as a moderator so she will be sharing all the links in the chat window mm -hmm. okay Hello. moving yeah uh moving ahead this will be our next upcoming event which is kind of exciting for everyone so we are organizing user research focused design challenge which will be there in october 2020 next month and we will be uh floating this registration surveys um, registration form in uh, starting october so this challenge will be kind of a different than the one which we organized uh, just now so this will be with a real organizations wherein you will get to know and you can collaborate with actual stakeholders you will get some free tools to work on this particular user research and you will get a good research case study which will you can utilize you can showcase that in your portfolio so this will be a real project real uh, problem solving that you will get a chance to work on it so stay tuned we'll be announcing the registrations from on our discord platform okay yep moving ahead uh uh i get uh, okay so at the last we, uh, we will have last 15 minutes for our q and a session we usually have thursday events by 30 pst 8:30 est feel free to ask any questions in the chat window we will be checking all those questions in the given session engage in our discord platform and start conversation and be kind okay uh, also i would like to say one more thing like uh, uh, jwalita will be sharing some links in the chat window wherein we have some uh, volunteer registrations then mentor registrations feel free to register over there we will connect with you shortly we will be sharing one networking link as well feel free to connect with others and uh, yes let's go ahead okay so this is for today's uh, today's event so today we will be announcing winners as well of this particular design challenge we will have two team two uh, uh, we will have grand prizes for top two teams wherein you will get gift cards for ui stencil you will get 3 month subscription free for jet tool which we usually use for user research analyzing the user research and all and everyone will get the user uh, certification from etretwix community so these will be grand prize will be for top 2 teams and all the participant will also get 2 months of free subscription of jade tool 
as we have seen there are the people who have worked on this particular challenge everyone has done the excellent job on this so we are giving the prizes for participant as well and the certifications as well okay so uh, yep yeah, uh, there are um, there is a support us link that we will be sharing in the chat window feel free to support our community if you really you really like the way we help others if you would like to help us as a community that will be helpful and uh, yes let's get started and also feel free to share your learnings with on your net uh, on your linkedin and other social media platforms as well so i will allow our first team which is team 13 to present their uh, project so go ahead and all the very best hello everyone this is team 13's presentation for iterate ux design challenge we are Tanya, Tiffany, and Pavitra. We come from varied backgrounds, and we enjoyed working together on this project. We'll be covering a brief overview of the project, followed by highlighting all the steps in the design process, starting with research till our current ongoing stage of testing. As a team, we selected mental health theme for this challenge after a brainstorming session. Currently, mental health apps are gaining in popularity, especially after the pandemic. There are over thousands of app and apps in the space, and they support a variety of features from managing sleep, anxiety, or self-monitoring overall well-being to support via community or talking to a therapist via the app. Our team chose to further narrow our focus to cater to men as our target audience. The stigma associated with mental health is greater with men, but the current research data points to men being more susceptible to death due to stress and mental illness. Nearly one in ten men experience some form of depression or anxiety, but less than half seek treatment. In 2020, men died by suicide 3.8 times more than women. It's an ongoing silent crisis. Research indicates that proactivity is crucial when it comes to managing stress and anxiety. And further, there are very few competitors in this space catering to men. Our solution. is a mental health app uplift that is geared towards men making an effort to normalize taking care of mental health in their normal routine understanding the existence of stigma and resistance to acknowledge mental health issues associated with our target audience our first phase of research began with designing a discovery survey to understand people and their current approach to wellness and dwell deeper in through interviews Simultaneously, we did a competitive analysis of the most common and popular mental apps. We identified the commonalities and unique features they offered and reviews. Again, there were just a handful of two or three apps currently focused on mental health for men. Trying to ensure a good number of responses for our survey, we kept it open and not restricted only to male responses. The result was 75% of responses were female and 21% were male. We identified top areas to improve wellness according to men were sleep, uh, being active, stress, anxiety, ability to focus and diet. From a variation of the number of responses between men and women, we, it further indicates that men are less inclined to share and discuss this information. We were able to interview two female participants but uh, considering our target audience is male, we conducted secondary research online and chatted with men in the lives of the female participants. for competitive analysis due to majority of apps being focused on females and noted a general tendency of visual vocabulary of mental health tending to overlap flowers and color hues and photographs of women with their eyes shut making it more relatable to women onboarding process was generally long and uh, with a need to answer multiple questions about one's mental health and again relatively very few male focused apps that encompass general wellness without the stigma So in coming from our research to the de design design phase it included developing our target user persona our high how might we statements and the problem statement so our user persona was defined from our initial research but we would like to have further research from in the form of user interviews from our target audience which would be the males 
um, to improve our focus on the user needs and frustrations. But based on the research that we had, our user Andrew would have a focus on his physical health, but struggles to find motivation. He also acknowledges stress in his life, but isn't always comfortable communicating about his mental health needs. This led us to our how might we. From the user persona, the background research and user interviews, we collaboratively, collaboratively developed our how might we statements and questions surrounding the idea of meeting the needs of Andrew, our user persona, along with other men with similar concerns. Our user needs a way to focus on his mental health, but finds it uncomfortable to address these issues. So we began the ideate phase with doing sketches and user flow based on some key defined design features revolving around our users persona, user persona's needs, as well as findings from our research. We wanted to have a masculine design while avoiding terms such as anxiety, calm, meditation, therapy, as those terms did not appeal to our target user. We instead used words like stress, focus, and activity to appeal to the needs and comfort level of our users. We also wanted to incorporate a challenge mode with the intention of engaging the user through gamifying the routine that helps with mental, mental health and well-being. This would be an alternative way for the user to create routines and goals. And lastly, we would like to implement an easy and simple onboarding and use of the app that is intuitive to the user's needs and wants, so there would be no complicated required steps or screens to minimize user abandonment. We focused our user flow on the initial screens to access that the user would need to access to accomplish the design goals, mostly focusing on the challenge mode and the home screen in order to give the user access to goals, as well as to gamify the experience, like I said, to make it more interactive and to have a built-in incentive for the user to use the app. As a team, we all created our own sketches, and lo-fi wireframes to initiate iteration. Based on our goals or our design goals, user flow and initial research. Okay, now I'm gonna speak a little bit about um, our kind of branding and color choices that we came to by looking at a more masculine focused approach from a lot of the other apps that we've seen. So this is just a quick, view of this and also using icons and signifiers to kind of designate um, difficulty levels for kind of each challenge that um, would be brought up in this app. And then also we have these little medallions for when a challenge is completed. Um, now I'm going to put on a video of a quick run through of our prototype. Oops, is it not playing? <laughs> okay, slight technical difficulty. Give me a second here. Take your time. Mm -hmm. This was working perfectly earlier, of course. Um, all right, let's, I'm gonna stop my sharing and bring up the video elsewhere. <sighs> okay. Sorry about that once again. And I will just switch gears here and take you through the prototype in Figma. <laughs> yeah, take your time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have our prototype and we're going to say that um, we've already signed up and just go through the quick login process here. Um, first, you're prompted to set up your goals, which would lead you to these challenges, which is a more structured approach, but you could also have the choice to skip that for now. Um, and then always go back and set up that challenge. And here, with when you skip that, you have the option to access different workouts, tips to manage your sleep, focus exercises, 
your metrics, which you would develop as you move through different um, different processes. Um, you can also join groups to engage with others or try something new, which would be, I mean, if you set up a channel challenge, these would be geared towards your specific goals. But if not, it would just be like more um, random kind of tips to try something different than what you're used to. And we also give the option to connect to a therapist, which would be through an outside app like BetterHelp and link you up that way. Um, but let's say we go back and set up a challenge. And so obviously some of these are placeholders at the moment, but you would check what applies to you, whether or not you currently have a routine, what you want to do. And then up here, it shows you're almost done with the process because we want to keep it quick and simple. And we would have to go back and do more research, obviously, to flush out this process, because I think that's a whole nother project in itself. Um, and then finally, now you have your challenge map available. Click into this. We have shown that this is a scenario where um, someone's completed four, four rounds within the challenge already and has a few more to go. So, and here you can see these little flames are to indicate um, kind of the level of difficulty of the challenge and what, what it includes. So if you click on round five, here you're prompted with a workout challenge and a sleep challenge, two flames. When you complete the round, that'll get filled in. And then you'll move on to the next round. And each, each challenge round um, encompasses nine. And then you would go back home and you could either set up a new challenge or maybe you need a break and you just go back to using the app through these other options. Now I'm going to go back to our presentation. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Time's up. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sorry about the glitch. <laughs> no worries. Mm -hmm. um, Uplift. Let's say we. Oh no! Is the now it's playing? Obvious too. Okay. <laughs> Something always goes wrong, but now the video is playing. But we're going to move on from that um, and go on to our next steps, which would be thorough usability testing, um, and then also more research. As we mentioned before, we need to interview actual male users and get their feedback on even our initial process, and then go back, tweak the prototype use all the usability testing and additional research to get another prototype and probably repeat the entire process again. So that is all. And thank you for bearing with me on that one. <laughs> thank you so much, Tanya, for the presentation. It was really awesome. And then like uh, we are checking, seeing like multiple presentation from last two days. And each and every project is different. We can see now. We were having only four projects, but each and every project is different. Really good job. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chris, yeah. Chris, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just want to say really great mm -hmm. job. I think, first of all, the one thing that I remember from your presentation or the one thing that I would conclude from your presentation to that, you told a really tight story and you told it really well. I can tell that you all practiced it, that you spent a lot of time on your presentation and, and going through it. Um, and I think you did it the right way. So I think a lot of uh, designers, when they're doing presentations like this, and even when they're doing case studies for their portfolio, they fall into the trap of just going through the design process step by step by step. But I feel like you guys really dodged that and you told a really tight story about this is the problem that we identified and we want to solve and here's how we solved it. Um, does someone want to bring up the presentation and we can kind of dive into a little bit, a little bit more about it? Sure. Let me go back to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, awesome. We can just kind of like start from the beginning and we'll talk through some things. Yeah, so the, I wanna, we can go to the this slide, right? The, not the next one. Just wanna say thank you for introducing the team. I love when people shout out their teammates and bring the, the whole team aspect of the design challenge in here. That's really important, especially when going through case studies, 
of not that you are a solo designer, but this is how I worked with a team of people to do something. So I love this slide. This is great. Thank you for adding this. And then, yeah, I like the way you set things up here as well. Um, if we want to jump to the next one and talk about the project overview here. So here, I like the way you set things up here. Uh, and if we want to just jump to the next slide, this is kind of where things start to fall apart a little bit with the story for me here. So you really honed in on men's mental health issues here and just mental health issues. Um, and then you specify this men's health, mental health issues here. So one thing that I'm missing from this slide and from the story overall was how you identified this as a problem and why you chose it as your problem. I think you touch on it a little bit of the why uh, when you mentioned there's hardly any competitors in the space. I think that can be a really compelling argument for doing something like this is that you want to shake things up, do something new and create something that um, you're going to be able to show to a very specific audience uh, that hasn't had anything marketed towards them yet. So I think that's a really compelling reason, but it felt like it was kind of glossed over to when you were talking about just the, the specific mental health problems that men were having. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then if we want to go into the next slide here, I loved, I also want to hit on this as well. I love that you put the solution in early. A lot of people wait till the end. It's, that is also a bit of a, a case study trap. You always want to put your solution right up front. You want to give people a little bit of sizzle, a little bit of pop, show them what you're going to show them. And I think this was a great slide to add here for your story. So this, um, this here, talking about the research phase, this really let me uh, know that this was a tight presentation when you kind of all combine it into one slide here, instead of going through each thing step by step. I think you lose a little bit of depth when you do something like this, but I think it allows you to tell just a tight story about what you did and, and why you did it. And that really shined through here. Uh, can you just go to the next version of this and we can talk through a little bit here? Yeah. So here is where tying back to like the, why did you pick mental health as your pain point, as your problem that you wanted to solve? It seemed like you spoke with mostly uh, females here for your research. So now I'm wondering as the viewer of this presentation, as the viewer of this story, when did you pick this problem? Um, was it at the beginning? Was it after this research that you realized that there was not a lot of men talking about mental health and you wanted to do that? Um, because- Do you want an answer or- <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure. Um, it was actually, it was after in this case when we really- kind of realized it and did some secondary research and realized that most mental health apps are not geared towards men and that they're responding less to this and that it would be nice to create a space for, for that. Yeah. Okay. I think just adding that in somewhere around here to, to your overall story would be great because it did feel like it was like, Hey, we've honed in on men, on men's mental health. Also, we only talked with women for our research. Um, so just kind of like tying that in of like, oh, we realized that there weren't a lot of men responding and we wanted to hone in on that. And then it would be great to maybe add in what you plan to do to bulk up your research here as well. And I see I'm running, running out of time here for feedback. Wow, that five minutes goes by fast. Um, one thing I did want to point out was around the branding of this presentation and the branding of the uh, of this app here idea. The presentation style, I think is very tight, but it's goes, it feels like it goes against your uh, masculine style that you want with the app. Mm -hmm. This presentation, it's full of pastels. It's filled with flowy fonts. Um, it's okay to like make the presentation match your app a little bit more and make the presentation style a bit more masculine. I think that would also help just reinforce some of the things that you're trying to tell. Great. <laughs> But overall, great, great job, great story. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing all the feedback. And I really like first point, like when you're presenting all the teams, which showcase that you are a team, a team member and you can work with the team. There are many soft skills that will 
that usually represent like collaboration and coordina coordination, which is very important as a UX person. So yeah, good job. <laughs> Now for team 13, <laughs> great. Okay, uh, so now next we have team 44. Team 44, please go ahead and share your screen. Mm -hmm. And I will start the timer. Mm -hmm. स्लाइस Hi everyone. Uh, we are the team forty-four. Uh, we have four team members: uh, Ricky, myself, and Pat, and Nyla, and Rehard. So we will take you through the details of the presentation by step by step. Yep. Now moving on to the agenda. Yep. Uh, in this presentation, we will be covering the three things: the context. Uh, sorry. Yep. The context and methodology. Uh, how we do it, and then how we are going to design, which is the idea and themes, and less bad always. We will be presenting the key takeaway and also improvement from the uh from the feedback from the users. Yep. Now we will be starting with the context. So um, our teams are choose to be uh working on the working on the pro uh of the mental health issue. But uh, when we start discussing about the mental health, we aware that uh, we aware and found out that the mental health is a very broad topic to be covered up. So that we try to uh, dive deep down into the uh, figure out what's the niche for the users' problem. So that uh, we do the secondary research first. Then we found out that the stress is the uh, how can I say like the stress is the most crit uh, crucial and also the most uh, important factor for the people who are having uh are working from home and also the people who are COVID the stress levels are increasing so that we decided to work on the stress uh level so that we wanted to explore how we can able to help the uh, those people who are having the stress. So after figuring out the stress. Uh, is the problem that we go into the methodology of the how we are going to do that? Uh, another previous slide, please. Uh, sorry, technical errors here. Uh, please go back to the quality research slides, slide number four. Yep. So how we do what we take the quality research for this uh, project by targeting the Uh, working adults who are having a stress. So we contacted the user interview type of the uh, research, and uh, we will be able to do the eight members of responded. We interview the working adults who are more likely to have the most stress in their day to day life because of the working environment changes or the the working stress or like the work from home stress. After doing the qualitative research, the user interview, we will be able to figure out the problem statement, which is the working professionals are the needing the tool uh, that can help the uh, that can help them to improve the quality of sleep and their sleeping routine because they are having the poor quality of sleep due to their work stress and also the overthinking. So they are having the bad quality sleeping habit like that, uh, that is caused by the stress. So after getting the problem statement, we come back to the team and uh, discuss how we are going to solve this. So uh, after finding out the problem statements, which is about the poor quality uh, having the poor quality sleeping, we come up with the solution of the uh, our. Uh, Our project, which is about uh, setting the target of the design, so that we decided to have a uh, solution for them to 
design an application where users can improve their quality of sleep by including the key features of effective sleep routine tracker and also the quality music and songs and sleep stories and meditation and also the workout aid and also the effective uh, sleep report for the users to see. Yep, uh, next slide, please. After uh, finding out the, after uh, we find out with the solution, uh, then we go into the stage of the uh, low fidelity design so that we start uh, doing the sketches and also the wireframe. Then we uh, have a, a low fidelity design with a clean UI so that we can help the user's eyes to be more relaxed and also the easy to understand. And then we put only the simple feature and also the simple UI so that it will help users to reduce the screen time and uh, right before the sleeping. Yes, please. After that, we tested the load fidelity design to the uh, usability testing. And we got the achieved feedback from the users so that the users uh, have the feedback of the, the onboarding screen is uh, confusing and it's just not clear. And then the input, uh, what kind of input do we have to uh, put? So we note down and also the, uh, make the changes in the high fidelity designs. And also that another key feedback we will be able to take out is that the music pattern on the sleep tracker screen is also confusing because there is no mention about the uh, track of the name of the track. So we revise accordingly. And then the report screen is, is uh, messy and also like it is easy to, uh, it is not easy to read the, the statistics so that we revise in the high fidelity slides. So by taking this feedback, we go into the uh, low, uh, high fidelity design working stage. Yeah, next slide, please. Yep. So uh, we before we go into the designing for the details, we started with the uh, the reviewing the color psychology and also the the color uh, things. So we choose the color according to the color psychology by choosing the blue, which uh, uh, kind of the dark blues to help users to users eyes to be uh how can i say like more easy to use because the most of the time they are going to use this application will probably be at the night time so that we don't want them to have a uh how can i say like a bad quality impression on the application and also we use the pink color which is representing the care and love and also the, the green color represent calm and stable so then we go into the high fidelity design stage. When we design the high fidelity design, we consider not only for the mobile object screens, we consider on the, the watches as well, uh, so that the user can use the application not only on the mobile devices, but also on the watches so that they can use anytime. Yep, so we will go into the, we will quickly went through the prototype, which we was done. Yep, now let me go to the, the uh, prototype for the application. Yep, so the, in the prototype, we will be mainly covering on the two prompts to do the time construct as well. So firstly, we started with the, the create account screen so that the, when we click on the sign in, uh, it will be uh, requesting the uh, the data and the users has to be input. So like the clusters, the, we will be having the default screen for the preset with the preset data. So we ask uh, that, uh, has the user list has been uh, disrupted? Uh, if we play it, we have uh, some uh some fit some uh, how can I say like uh, some features that they can choose. So if they want a better quality of sleep, they can choose and then just simple click next, and then uh they can choose how many hours they want to sleep. And then after that, we will be going to like uh, what's their ideal bedtime and also the ideal uh, wake up time. Yep. It just uh, simply functions as the user has to be to like the click, 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 and just go. Then the, we asked, uh, we just didn't go directly to the presentations and we asked for the feedback, uh, the publishing from the users first. Yeah, after the data is done, uh, the, the key post screen of the sleep tracker is pop up so that the the user can see their idea, the timing screens, and also that we have a, a feature of the uh, music application as well, so that they can see the sounds is playing. 
Yep, then we go into the when we start the sleep uh, features that we can the, the user can choose the nodes as well. Then we go into the the sleep now screens that is more of like the kind of like the uh, how can I say always on this face the user can see and then they can just uh, put away from this. Yep, then they can choose the quality of sleep as well. Then moving on to the music screens, is, which is very uh, straightforward. We have a sleep stories, a sleep style. They can just choose any music that they want to listen and just uh, that's this. And then, uh, yeah. And when we go into the meditation sleeps, then we can, the user can choose the meditation or walk out, or if they want to put it, they can choose. And also the articles is also available, yep. And then the last but not least will be the other uh, key features, which is about the sleep report. So the user can see their report of their sleep so that they can keep track of the quality of their sleeping. So how many hours did they spend? How many hours did they sleep? And then what's their average sleeping hours? And uh, what's their mood for the weeks or maybe even a month or something like this? So like we present the statistics. Yep. So that's the prototype of the our project. After the after uh, prototype is done, we as the final stage, we did the usability testing for the high fidelity design as well. Yep. Uh, uh, please go back the next before slide space. Iteration. Yep. Uh, so we will be able to collect key three feedback from the users regarding with the high fidelity designs. So based on our design target. So in the, for example, like in the uh, music screens, the users as mentioned that the, the there is no suggestion or the uh, how can I say like the stories behind about the sleep stories or even the sleep um, users, so that they don't know what can what can it be help. So uh, we went. We tried. Decided to include the the story behind about the, our features or the the tips and also the suggestion from the the our features. Yep. And then, uh, at last but not least, we will have a, a very simple features, which is like the uh, adding the calendar icon on the on the calendar day, so the user can see instantly that oh, this is about the um the time or the month though, so that they can choose not only on the test but also on the icon as well so that it's easy to understand yeah. um vicky sorry to interrupt yep. uh if you can just quickly wrap up that yes it's great. almost mm -hmm. finished yep. Mm -hmm. yep so uh last but not least we, we are on the last uh almost done so like uh from working with this project, we have been uh, able to uh, able to take away the uh, key learning from this project. So, like the, we will be able to take out the key four learnings, which is the teamwork. Because uh, by working with the team, having a clear communication is very important, and also the having a great teamwork is the important factor to finish the design project. And also, the prioritizing is also the, the cr critical as well. Because uh, while we are in the discussions, we have to prioritize on the key features which we are going to uh, work on so that uh, we will be able to finish in the limited time. And then when we go into the designs, we, the team is also important as well. So considering the color psychology or something like this, the, it helps, the, helps to improve the behavior of the application so that the user can be more uh, friendly with the application. And then let them know this will be the final niche because what we are going to discuss about the very broad topic is uh, we will not be able to cover up all the solution in the one screen or so the one application so that we have to uh, find a niche to be uh, able to help the users effectively. Yeah. Then after that, we got feedback from the users for the improvement of for our application so that the, the we consider this as a next step. So as the next steps, we will be uh, having a new features, which will be the voice accessibility so that uh, when, we, when the users go to sleep, they can just use their voice to activate the applications and start the, the use of the application so that they don't need to touch the screens. Yeah, that's all for our presentation. Thank you from the team for.
thank you team 44 it was really yeah. uh, like a different topic altogether i can say great job thank you mm-hmm. apologies for the technical issue sorry yeah. no worries no worries chris can you please go ahead mhm yeah another great job and great project good presentation um if someone wants to pull it up we can kind of talk through some things as well as the figma prototype too i'd love to dive into design some design this time so from a story perspective um i think the the beginning seemed a little bit muddled to me it seemed like it took a little while to get to the actual problem that you're trying to solve here so i really would have loved to see really stronger clarity on exactly what the problem you were trying to solve was why specifically you're trying to solve this problem and then how you went about solving it what were the specific features within your app and your design that were meant to solve the exact problems that you found with uh having to go to sleep these these sleep problems here um you mentioned talking with interview talking to people with interviews i would have loved to have known what exactly you learned from those interviews you mentioned it that you spoke with them but i, I didn't quite grasp exactly what you learned from those interviews and how that translated into the design decisions that you made throughout the app it seemed like you really honed in on this problem but it's important to have the backing of the user research that you did when you're talking about the design decisions that you're going to make as a designer some of the most important things we can do is communicate the needs of the users to the rest of the organization and so it's really important to be close to the users to use them to help us better make designs and help us yep. argue for those design decisions when we're talking with our developers with our product managers with the people from the business all our different team members that aren't designers themselves. So I would have loved to learn more about your interviews as well as how many people you did talk to. One thing I liked is that you mentioned that you honed in on a specific user type um about people who are really working and who are stressed. I would have liked to see how you exactly filtered to get to those users. Uh I don't think that's super necessary, but if that is something that uh if this was a more in-depth interview I'd like to hear about and ask you about how you found those people. And then yeah. why was this solution? Why did you pick this problem? You mentioned the problem statement something that I remember seeing in your problem statement was about people have lower quality sleep because they are stressed. So let's make a sleep app. And that seems almost a little backwards to me. I think you 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 touched on the problems in the actual design. but when you're talking about the problem statement itself it, it's more like we want to lower people's stress so that they will have better sleep uh, so that the people having stress is what's causing bad sleep so that's kind of what seemed like your app was really focused on was let's help people lower their stress right before they're about to fall asleep so that they can have better sleep and therefore lower the stress overall in life um One thing I liked about your presentation as well is on the, some of the different design screens you mentioned your design goals what you were designing towards I think that's super important is to have design goals and one of the things just the biggest reason is you're not going to know you hit a goal unless you have a goal itself so it's really important to state what your design goals are up front so that you have something to design towards I loved in your presentation that you added some little blurbs, some little speech blurbs like there were quotes from the users from your feedback sessions. That's always a really powerful tool when you're talking with your stakeholders is this is something the user said exactly to bring that up. Overall, the your designs looked pretty clean. Um I think you might need to do a consistency pass on the design screens themselves before you throw them up in a portfolio. They did look like they were designed by different people which i imagine they were it looked like each person kind of took their own section like i'll do the music i'll do the meditation i'll do the the visuals uh i totally get that that's probably what happened given the timeline 
but they do look like they were designed by different people and not by a team. So kind of just going through a consistency pass of all the screens and making them more unified, coming up with a stronger design system is going to go a long yep. way towards the final presentation once they're, they're in a portfolio case study. And then uh, I do want to say great visualizations on the sleep reports. I thought those were great. Visualizations are always really nice to see. It's They're very, very powerful rather than just showing the numbers, uh, just like kind of giving some kind of visualization to go along with them, just helps them make more meaning to the user itself. And then I think next steps, when you talk about reflections and next steps, maybe dig into that a little bit more as far as does the app actually work at lowering stress and improving sleep quality before you jump into, can we do accessibility with voice, which I think is a super cool feature um, and definitely something on the roadmap, but maybe figure out if it works first and, and how you can really make a, a, a great app that helps lower stress. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Chris, for the feedback. And I really like the prototype and the animation. It was really nice. Yeah. Good job, team. And it's moving. That was really cute. That was good. Yeah, that was really cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Okay, so thank let's, uh, yeah, thank you. Let's uh, go ahead with team 22. And thank you so much for your patience, team 22. Please go ahead and share your screen and all the very best. Okay. So uh, let's begin. Uh, welcome to the presentation of Lighten. Uh, Lighten is a mental health application. So uh, our team members are uh, currently right now Toya Darker as UX designer and me, myself, and Desire Kaiser as a UX researcher. Our mentors were Joel, Germany, Sophie Key, and today our mentor is Chris Zephanotis. Sorry for uh, bad pronunciation. Uh, sorry about that. So yeah, uh, let's move on. So uh, what is our project about? So the project is, uh, it's very simple and we have designed to make it very simple actually. So uh, Lightning is a mental health uh, improving application where you can just get a place to vent that means express yourself and listen to calming music and play games. That's the simple idea of it. And we're gonna move forward and explaining how we went to that. So, okay, so firstly, initially, the what's uh, the research phase? Uh, the research phase, the initial problem statement was a little bit of complex and a little bit different from where we are now. Uh, so what we observed is that there's a lack of communication in the corporate space where employees can't really express themselves and can't share how they feel. And employers also have a hard time sharing their end of the bargain as they can't express what their frustrations are uh, because they uh, are in some sort of a leadership role and definitely employers fail to understand employees as well so these kind of communication is a problem and misunderstanding so uh, this in turn decreases the quality of life and also makes the business suffer so what we wanted to do is improve the communication structure and, and build a sort of uh, understanding between employers and employees. But that's a little bit of hard to do as that requires improved culture. And yeah, so how, let's uh, move on to the next slide. So our research methods were semi-structured interviews based on a questionnaire and online surveys and secondary web research and competitive analysis. So, uh, so like the questionnaires are some sort of like this. We try to make it as uh, open-ended and as unbiased as possible. And definitely we kind of move forward to the, to more, a little bit of personal experience related questions because uh, initially we wanted to make them feel at home and trust us uh, with the process. So yeah, uh, so we started with how are you feeling today? What makes you feel that way and all that, and then move forward to what kind of work do you do? Uh, what do you think about your job and why, what's the good thing that you love it about your job? And uh, uh, and eventually uh, talk towards like, have you faced any anxiety issues and how do you manage to uh, uh, manage your job if you're having a mental breakdown? So, and same goes for the employer, but a little bit of uh, different questions so that like, how do they manage their team and uh, what kind of project management tools they use and uh, like, uh, 
do they uh, communicate with their employees and whatnot? So yeah, all right. So uh, moving on. Uh, so we chose like uh, around 11 participants overall from Bangladesh and Myanmar. So yeah, and let's move on to the defined stage. All right. So what we gathered from identified from the problems and interviews that and uh, that like there, uh, especially uh, uh, me, uh, when I uh, interviewed three participants. So, so what I identified is that the problems we are hoping to see were there. It's kind of a different problem that we saw that there was, they were really communicative, at least uh, who I spoke. And in Myanmar, it's a different perspective. And in Bangladesh, in other companies, there, there is a different perspective as well. But, and uh, from our experience, it was bad, but uh, people who I interviewed was a little bit different. So what we found the problem was like, there wasn't any place to vent or express, express themselves. They feel lonely. And there wasn't any uh, proper organized well-maintained mental health program available, probably because of budget issues or multiple other reasons. And there is no organized and structured workflow using project management tools. And there wasn't any, uh, you know, especially there wasn't any connection to psychiatrists or mental health professionals or counselors, because of course they're expensive to hire. Uh, so these are the problems. So yeah, and uh, uh, I forgot to mention that we are, me and uh, Toet are gonna go back and forth explaining this. So I am going to uh, pass it to him after this to explain the competitive analysis part. Uh, Delvin, can you please uh, speak up? Uh, okay, so we an we analyzed uh, over well, seven different mental applications and we found, uh, we found out uh, we decided to add, um, mark, them, mark their unit features and common features and their gap. Was there, can we move to the another slide? Yeah, for for example, like uh, yeah, to set uh, for example uh, for the uh, common features like assessment, assessment, guided video, meditation, exercise, um, journaling, blah blah blah, those kinds of stuff, and for the and and like unique features like many guys from the uh, respect the app, and the oh uh, yeah, was there? Can you move to another slide? To the end, to the end, up to the end. Sorry, guys. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So uh, well, we were uh, the problem that we observe from the computer analysis are uh, the app. Uh, yeah. So the first thing is that the app are clutter with information and and also uh, some of the as uh, well, some some of the app needs and premium feature to access uh, to the whole to the whole app. I mean, uh, their features. So yeah, it can be expensive for people, and uh, and another thing is that boss don't behave like human and also increase their cognitive load. And, and there is no place to just fence using a voice uh, because I mean, well, they only allow the well, obligation to support their test feature. And, and also the test doesn't convey emotion and also too many instructions and suggestion in the, in most of the mental health application. So move to the other slide. Yeah, so okay, uh, we currently we're gonna only uh, let this get only about the uh, one user only, personnel. Only this, one yeah, user only this. We need so yeah, people. yeah. So Zan is uh, twenty one years old and she's a university student. Yeah, okay, we're gonna skip that part. And uh, her goal is like she wants a mental health program where employees can state their concerns and problem, and also she wants a group therapy session. Like so that everyone can discuss and find solution and remedy together in the in the in the session, and also interestingly, she mentioned that she wants uh, she wants like a team bonding activities where employees can enjoy together, and also which can make them feel energetic. Yeah, and also she mentioned the hard frustration upon uh, upon uh, upon most of them. Like, well, mental health programs is like she's she's just afraid to share about her secrets 
uh, like the thing that she don't want to talk to anyone. Like, and well, when the therapist forcefully asked her, like, they really, uh, when, when the therapist asked her, like, I mean, she wants to know about her better, like that kind of time. Yeah. All right. So, to move to the next slide. Yes, sir. Next slide. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, uh, all right. So let's uh, redefine our problem statement again. Okay. So the redefined problem statement was uh, that the app, uh, apps in the mental health space are, uh, space are very complex. So our app should have reduced complexity and simple to use. It should be accessible to everyone and create a sense of community and social bonding through multiple forms and functions of interactions. These, this is the uh, redefined problem statement that we are focusing on. And why? Because I, I felt that I added this slide to uh, like, because I felt that Chris is going to ask these questions. So like, why we did we move from everyone instead of corporate space? Because what we felt was that in case of corporate space, we, we are targeting on very specific niche rather than, you know, making it accessible for everyone. And, and it's really problematic because, uh, at, different corporate spaces have different structure of work and it, it require it doesn't give a person uh, 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 to self help self help themselves or any way and there is no venting and there there is no way there, there is no app where you can uh, you know vent using your voice and we are very social uh, social beings so uh, we need to express ourselves through voice so definitely voice carries a lot of emotional uh, uh, depth. So yeah, why calming games? Because I think that calming games and calming music definitely soothes. Uh, there's a lot of research behind this as well. Uh, sorry, I couldn't add it to this slide. But uh, there's a research behind that calming games and calming music uh, can reduce stress and reduce our frustrations as well. So yeah, uh, let's move on to the prototyping phase or like the ID phase. Yeah, now, uh, yeah, you all know the app idea already. So let's uh, skip that slide. So we have information architecture, user flow, and wireframes. So definitely, let's, uh, uh, I'll uh, again ask uh, uh, Delvin to speak this, speak about this information architecture. Go ahead. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so this is the information architecture of all the lighting. So, like, it's like a generate. Uh, mental health application, like when the user, yeah. So when the start of the app, I mean, the user had to open the app and you know, create an account and then do sort of step. I mean, you might see when you use the app. So can okay, you move to the another? All right. Okay, so uh, the first thing I have is user flow. This is the user flow one. This is a scenario about the user when the user trying to use the app and ran out their feelings. So yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and also this is a scenario too, and this uh, this right now uh, this is about the this is about the user where well when they are trying I mean when they are trying to consult with a the therapy and this is like a process for the booking process I mean therapy booking process. Sorry. Oh, all right. Okay, so yeah, so now uh, I'm going to present the UI walkthrough, so home screens, emergency services, so yeah, let's walk through it instead of uh, giving a list. Can you guys see, by the way? Uh, uh, yes, we can see. Uh, sorry. Okay, oh, I can... Uh, all right, so let's... Uh, Okay. So we study it. Yeah. Okay. So this is the onboarding screen. Uh, yeah, it's a, a very typical onboarding screen. Uh, we'll move on to the next thing. So the create account, sign up, and it's it shows everything is encrypted. So this is the home page. It's a very simple version. So uh, like they would be able to uh, play games immediately, listen to music. Or, uh, and we have added a slide to access emergency services page and they can't trigger it immediately. They would have to slide it to access set up emergency services. And we have uh, added uh, like country support, country-based support, emergency helpline, 
And uh, another thing would be to add notify emergency contacts immediately. So if, uh, so there is an option, probably it's not showing here, unfortunately, that if they are present in the screen for, yeah, exactly. So five seconds, it would automatically call uh, the emergency services. Yeah, it works. So yeah, the, these kind of uh, features that we have we have implemented. So yeah, and we have also implemented a simpler task management tool like uh, yeah, set your goals, job tasks, completed, and uh, you'll be able to add tasks and uh, with multiple things. These uh, UI needs to improve a little bit interactions but yeah uh, task lists we can plan complete it so yeah uh, simple and the task lists have one uh, you know forcing function that uh, a person wouldn't be able to add more than three tasks because we have observed that yeah people get overwhelmed with multiple tasks at a time uh, like more than uh, three or five tasks at a time so they would be able to only add three to five and when they're complete, when they have completed that, they will be able to add more tasks. It's just a simple tool. And yeah, for, uh, uh, let's go to the rest. So the main focus is the venting screen. So if they start venting, uh, press start venting is like, it will show their visuals. They have, they'll show, uh, it's, it's an AI based tool. It's a little bit tricky right now to say there is a quite a bit of research on understanding emotion through speech. But what we'll do is like it will try to understand what your emotional state is and give it give some kind of a visualization and uh, give suggestion on what you should do right now to calm your stress down or help you feel even more better if you're already feeling better. And yeah, so and it's a it's you can also share this uh, with your friends or uh, volunteers or therapists. And we in case of friends, adding friends option is a very unique one. We want people to use this application as an augmentation rather than a full-fledged app we want to uh, we want them to make friends through scanning the qr codes and make real friends instead of virtual ones yeah that's uh, one ways of uh, trying to make people socialize and yeah and this app uh, in this app for uh, we have like volunteer helpers or like certified or like I would say screen volunteers who can listen to you and talk to you and definitely that uh, they would be trained enough. That's a huge deal uh, other than this. But the point is that the communication has to convey emotion. So there's no text available. That's a forcing function as well. And yeah, uh, all right, so give me a sec to change. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's one. And you can also, uh, uh, speak with psychiatrists and uh, find experts. That's a very normal feature already available in other applications, but we have added it for so that our, it's it's more not like psychiatrists. Actually, they're more like therapists because uh, like as we're targeting international customers, definitely it's it's really going to be difficult to uh, for uh, like to sub uh, you know prescribe. Uh, medicine so definitely that's not an option but uh, unfortunately we didn't change it change the wording here uh all right so yeah in case of games uh so yeah we have added two kind of games was like uh, single player and multiplayer multiplayer is not online it's based on one screen like sharing one screen only so yeah uh like and for a single player there there's these are calming games like alpha's odyssey uh so yeah i'll show you Give me a sec. Uh, where is it? So yeah, this is this is Alto's Odyssey, and so this is a very calming game with that very uh, beautiful background music and a limited, uh, you know, very little UI to distract you. So definitely that, and we wanted to implement one thing as in that limit their use of the games because they we want to, uh, we don't want them to stay glued to the application just like every other application so that like they can uh you know uh, like it will give a notification of source to let them go out of the application uh from time to time and yeah this is two player games from a uh, single screen so you can play pool and penalty kicks so yeah so uh one of the questions i'm expecting that like are we gonna build the games or are we gonna get the uh, you know uh 
you know, make the music ourselves? Uh, the answer is definitely no, that we want to uh, this use this as a platform for calming games and, uh, you know, uh, multiplayer games for corporate, improved cooperative behavior. So yeah, these kind of things that we have planned so far. And uh, getting back to the app itself, I think, Delvin, have you missed, have you missed anything? Uh, hello? Oh, yeah, you have a mention about the music. Okay, so the music app is very straightforward, I think. And I don't think we need to explain yeah, it. Yeah, so, and also if yeah. you want to share about the, I mean, like, therapy bogus function. I okay. Think. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, I, the I think we need to shorten it down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry, give me, give me one minute. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I'm really sorry, I wanted to shorten it down, but there wasn't any way. Uh, all right, so yeah, it's really hard to narrow it down in 10 minutes. Okay, so yeah, uh, other than that, I don't think we have missed. So, you would notice one, uh, you know, play button. So, uh, uh, like this is for music so if it would immediately start playing music when you just uh, get inside the app but it would give you an option to stop the music immediately so yeah we need to test it so the testing phase is uh, is something that we haven't done yet uh, the test is work in progress I uh, like initial test results like uh, Delvin has uh, you know, tested it to like three or four users probably. So they have said like there is too much green all over the place. The play doesn't serve any purpose yet because there is no background music and the venting screen service purpose for now at least for self-help. And uh, yeah, so, so we have designed some self-question test questionnaires to test on Maze and uh, and Jai, uh, the UX tool, Jade, I, I don't know the pronunciation so far. So yeah, and uh, yeah, these are the questions. And for future work, we would like prepare better presentation with visualization and everything. And the, it's, it's already high fidelity prototype, I know, but yeah, we would add uh, more interactions and the usable testing with results with more accurate references. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, sorry for taking so much time. No worries. Thank you so much. I know that like 10 minutes are very less time to present the work that we have worked on like for uh, for entire month. I, I agree. I absolutely agree on that. Okay, great. Really good job, I can say. Great. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, can we take part in UX research? Based, yes. Uh, you know, uh, challenge as well? Yes, definitely, definitely. You can take a part in user research challenge as well. And we will be sharing the registration on our Discord and our social media platforms as well. Great. So we'll get to know Great. that. Perfect. Great. And I really like the way, like you mentioned, that you will be using the JED application as we will be giving some prizes for all the participants as well and the winners as well. So you can use that for free version. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, Chris, you can go ahead, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, uh, great presentation, guys. I can tell based on the energy and the passion that you have in your voice that you were really excited about this project. Uh, that shows yes. through for sure. Um, do you want to pull up the slides and we can kind of talk through them a little bit? Yeah, sure, sure. Awesome. So yeah, so idea. the first thing I want to say is I love the unique idea of this app that helps you vent. That is super cool. I am a sucker for unique ideas. And oh, I think it's you. awesome. Um, where, where do you want to go to the slide? Yeah, you just start at, at like uh, five. Let's go with five. Okay. All right. Five. Yeah. All right. Let's five. Okay. All right. Yeah. Can so, yep. Yeah. This is great, and we can kind of work, work work our way through this very quickly here. Um, so yeah, with this screen, I like the way you set up your story a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure the visuals here are exactly what you want to go with, but let's keep definitely, moving definitely. Space. But I didn't, I didn't find any better visuals for place to vent. So like, it's more like always giving them screen rather than uh, letting them like, explain a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> really uh -huh. sorry about that. Let's jump to, to slide seven here and talk about the problem statement a little bit. Yeah. So the problem statement here, 
This is something that got lost a little bit within the presentation, especially when we started going to the design stuff. But you started really strongly with this idea around employees and employers. And that is unique. It is interesting. It also opens up a ginormous can of worms um, that you might want. I'm not sure if you want to deal with that or if you want to if you want to think through all the problems that this potentially has. Because I think if, you, if you're talking about employee-employer relationships and having some kind of app that helps employees that maybe an employer pays for, that helps employees, um, you need to ask yourself, how can this be used for evil? How? Right, exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah, you just yes, want to... Yes, that's why that kind of I abandoned speech. that idea. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I thought like, okay, no, that, that uh, gives the corporate a lot of control and we won't be able to actually provide any kind of control. Yes. Yeah. So as, a, as an employee, I think something I know just personally I would think of was, can I even trust using a platform like this and having features built in to help alleviate those kind of feelings would probably be really great for an app like this. But it's this would be something that you would really want to think through all the ethical considerations and concerns around having an employee employer type app like this. Um, and you might want to bring those up in the in the presentation or talk about them as part of features for the app. But yeah, that's the first thing I thought of was, wow, what an interesting idea. And then, oh, wait a minute, this could go really, really poorly in the wrong hands yep. if it's not done right. So, I mean, something that you bring up interestingly here with your problem statement here is kind of like make businesses um, suffer, which as a business, that means more dollars for me, which is great. Businesses love more dollars. Right. Uh, one thing to <laughs> do would be do some research around this. If I'm remembering my research that I did like seven years ago around a similar problem like this, happy employees and sad employees are equally as productive. So yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I, that's not a great statistic. <laughs> that's a really bad statistic, right? Yeah, I or, kind so of like, found does, the your, does your app really go and solve the problems that you want to be solving? And is it going to be worthwhile if you're bringing in this employee employer relationship? Is it worthwhile for the employer to work with this app that may or may not actually provide them the almighty dollars they're looking for at the end of right, the day? Right, right. Um, yeah. So let's jump forward a few slides here. Uh, so let's let's go to the competitive analysis here because um, we we don't have too much time. So I want to go through things quickly here. So I like that you focused on the features and the competitive advantages here as well for this analysis. It, but if we jump to like two slides forward, I think it is. Yep. Yeah, it shows One, the, the problems of, observed. Yeah. So here it kind of breaks down. A little bit. I think a lot of people, yeah. when they do competitive analysis, they focus too. They focus too much on the UX of each app that they're looking at, and not enough about the features that they bring and the competitive advantages that each app does. Like, what is the unique thing that each competitor does that is is what they're known for? That's what you should be focusing on. And but then you kind of devolved into the problems here with more UX focused stuff. And some yes. of these don't really resonate or are not super meaningful, like increased cognitive load. I know what that means. I don't know what that means in this context. Um, right. That I'm not sure why it's going to affect your design specifically. I will right. say yeah. overall, for the this presentation, you took a really long time to get to the screens. I, If we could add like the screens up front as part of like the first couple slides, that would be really great because uh, that's really if, if you're going with a design presentation, we want to see some designs. We want to see what you came up with. So we're all here right. for, that, for those designs that you did. So definitely right. add those in. And then I'm going to just wrap up really quickly with 30 seconds here talking about the, the designs that you have. So I really liked the idea of a venting app. I think it, that's awesome. It's unique. I think it solves a problem. Um, I think if you tie your entire presentation around the idea of a venting app, these screens look great. I think these screens look great for the venting part of it. Just tie everything around this idea of an app that helps you vent, which is going to reduce your stress. 
um, really focus in on this kind of thing because I feel like you've added a ton of other features in here that yeah. kind of take away from this really core feature of the app. Like it feels to me like this venting thing is really what the app is about. It's what it's, it's true. It's what yeah. its yeah. unique competitive advantage is. So you really want to highlight that with your story and with the designs. Um, and just to like kind of give an example, the biggest button on this screen is slide to access emergency services. So that is going to make people think that that is the primary action. When I feel like the primary oh, okay. action is like, let's start venting right venting. now. Yeah. Uh, so right. I, I think just focusing a little bit on this really cool idea that you have come up with, I think you have some research behind it already, just refocusing the story and the app and the designs a little bit more on venting as the primary action. Uh, and this would be really awesome. But it was, it was still really good overall. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Anything else, Chris? Nope, that is all. That is all. Great. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank yeah, you so we'll much, keep Chris. Working on this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing your feedback and for our uh, team. 22, 44, and 13, feel free to connect with uh, Chris after this presentation as well. He will give his other feedback as well, which will help you to uh, like improvise on your project. So yeah, feel free to connect with him. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep. Great. So now the most awaited moment over here, people are waiting for announcing the winners out here. So yep. Before we move ahead, I would like to give a big round of applause to our organizer who all are managing this design challenge, Amy, Nadia, Alicia, Sita, and Alice. Congratulations. And they have done an amazing job for managing and planning all these design challenge activities. Really great job. And congratulations for all the teams it is a very difficult uh, situation for us also to announce the two teams, but everyone has done a great job, we can say. Okay. Okay. So let me just go ahead, share my screen, and I will allow Amy to announce the winners. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Great, so we have some super exciting prize details to share with you that were already um, posted in the Discord, but if you didn't catch it there, here they are again. So all participants are going to get to benefit from a two month subscription to the Jade AI UX tool, um, which you heard in the uh, presentations today actually. So if you haven't tried it yet, um, everyone will get the opportunity to get to play with it. Um, and each participant will also receive an Iterate UX challenge certificate. And this is something really nice that you can put on your LinkedIn, you know, just have um, for your own reference that you completed this challenge. Um, and then we have also um, two grand prize winners. And this was super difficult um, for us to choose. Um, basically how it worked is all the mentors gave nominations for one to two te teams uh, based on the team's collaboration and engagement, checking in with their mentors um, throughout this challenge and uh, teams that had submitted their projects. Um, and is, can you guys hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, my AirPod just died. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to make mm -hmm. sure the volume was still working. Um, so from this nomination list, um, creative team all met together to vote on the winners and the winners will receive um, gift cards for UI stencils, which is a really fun uh, company that has different UX um, organizational tools, stencils, really nice things for your research and sketching process, um, stuff for on the go. Um, and they will get a three month subscription to the Jade AI UX tool and also an Iterate UX challenge certificate. So, drum roll, here are our winners. <laughs> okay. 
Congratulations to Team 36 and Team 41. Um, team 36, we have Daniel, Christine, and Joe, and Team 41, Esharia, Vanessa, and Esther. So congratulations to everybody for all of your hard work, honestly, getting to see the files, the presentations. Everyone did such a great job. So congrats to all and congrats to our winners. <laughs> hey everyone, on behalf of Iterate UX, we would like to thank you so much for watching this week's event. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. We'll have events every Thursday at 5.30 Pacific time. Join our Discord in the description to find out more.